Ghostbusters Dose! Yeah, whatever. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's an you iconic. Got possessed by Beagle. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the only thing that I like in this movie it was Edward, the huh? baby. That's the name, Oscar. Yes. No, that was you, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. Heavy... No, that baby was busted. I was a beautiful Gerber baby. <laughs> you could have given me an hour and a half of Bill Murray just babysitting, and I would have watched it. So, is it a bad movie? The show we pluck our name out of an all time movie watch list, watch it and review for your review and pleasure. The movie we're scratching off the list today is a 1989 best sequel ever. No, Ghostbusters Dose the discovery of a massive river of ectoplasm and a resurgence of special activity allows the staff of Ghostbusters to revive the business. We talked about our relationship, I guess, <laughs> with this. <laughs> franchise in the first ghostbusters review so if you haven't seen that head on over there and check that out so we're just gonna get right into the movie i really like how the movie starts off running right it's five years later there's like not even an intro not even a name the first thing you see that pops up on the screen is five years later i like that. i like that. <laughs> yeah and then the song kicks in right after a little bit and it was literally five years later right yeah i think so yeah in real life yeah the rude kid in the beginning that's like, my dad says you guys suck. Oh, Simon. <laughs> Th that's actually the director's son. Okay. Oh, Ivan Reitman? Yes. Isn't he later directing something? Yes, he went on to g direct Ghostbusters <laughs> Afterlife. Oh, damn. <laughs> no okay, it. little prick. But he's also a great director because he also did Juno and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, okay. nice. And the way this movie starts is how Aykroyd actually wanted the first one to start. He wanted them to be kind of bums kind of down on their luck this way but that was rewritten in a b bunch of different ways for the for the first movie was this movie as improvised as the first one i don't think so because there's definitely not a whole lot of love went into this one. Oh, so this was just for the money not necessarily there was just a lot of different things going on between the characters or like it took five years really because bill murray didn't want to do it oh shit okay plus after the success of the first one they all went their separate ways mm -hmm. creatively and they all went to go do their own thing the director Aykroyd, ramus bill murray of course and even ramus and Aykroyd felt that the first one ended nicely they, they didn't feel like there wasn't any need for a sequel but of course columbia pictures kind of forced them yeah to mm -hmm. do it and honestly i feel like that's a little felt here it doesn't feel as magical or as natural as the no. first one even though i like it it feels a little bit more stiff mm -hmm. yeah we this is what we watch in the theater mm -hmm. we were excited because it's gonna be like we, 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 we saw that cartoon the first one and the second one's gonna be well it's gonna be the shit yeah and it wasn't <laughs> no <laughs> definitely not but i do want to say some stuff that i do like because i do like how easily we catch up with what happened between those five years, right? Oh, yeah. They got sued by everyone. They went out of business. Bennett and Venkman ended up badly. She got married to another guy. She had a baby. She divorced the guy. And this is all told in a can full of conversations within the first two minutes of the movie. And we're caught up what happened those five years, right? I really didn't like that everybody was down on, like, quote unquote, down, down on their luck. Hmm. It was so negative that we, we, we kind of pick up on a negative note. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point of the movie that the slime underneath is built off of the negativity of the f of the city, so that makes sense. Yeah. Just hit after hit after hit. The thing that dragged for me that I wasn't a fan of was the bad guy, Vigo the Carpathian. I wasn't a fan of the whole painting come to life. The painting was cool, but it felt a little bit too goofy to me. This cheap in the movie, honestly. Yeah. And because they're dealing with wild stuff, right? The the ghost and the ghosts are ridiculous, right? And it's a comedy. You have to toe the line between funny stupidity and dumb stupidity. And this movie to me was almost a hair over to the cross to the dumb line stupidity, in my opinion. I really didn't like the bad guy either, man. I, I, I thought I, I, I couldn't see, I, I, I was going to see more ghosts, more double the ghosts in the first one, catching another thing. Because they're gold, I mean, they're busting ghosts. I mean, they busted the whole ghost in New York City. I, don't I think, think so. that's what it is. I mean, there are no more ghosts. 
Well, no, until they let them free at the end. I don't know, but I mean. That's the whole point. They ran out of business because there were no more ghosts already because the ghosts were from Gozer, I guess. Hey, Gozer the Gozerian, Vigo the Carpathian. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I like this movie it was Edward, the huh? baby. That's the name? Oscar. Yes. No, that was you, man. That's the awesome one. Like that was A.Y. Goldilocks. No, all the way. I'm, I, I mean, it kind of looks like you. I'm sorry. No, that baby was busted. I was a beautiful Gerber baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was way cuter than that. What I saw it, I get no, it. Was like, not that's, me. That's, not anyway, me. that's Edward. Not me. I'm busted now, but I was a Gerber baby. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was, I was beautiful. I, that, those twins had nothing on me, dog. Sorry. But speaking of the baby, that was the best part for me was Venkman and the kid, right? Just uh, yeah. Murray messing around with the kid. That's probably the best part of the movie for me. Yeah, it, it's cute. It's hilarious. And it feels kind of like natural. It's like genuine. It's something that he would probably do. Like you see him in like a father figure role because you're changing the role from this playboy mm-hmm. to a potential father figure for this kid. And that, that was kind of nice. That felt that felt kind of cool. My favorite ghosts are, are the brothers at the beginning in the courthouse. Yeah, this leads to those two ghosts appearing at the courthouse who appeared to got the chair. And if you pay attention, you can tell that those designs are based off the Blues Brothers, the John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd characters. <laughs> that part that I was like, hilarious. Yeah. yeah, the courthouse was cool. I think that's my favorite scene of the whole movie, the mm-hmm. courthouse scene. Yeah. The ghosts still look pretty good. I really like that aesthetic, right? Over like other some other weirdo, goofy CGI. I really, really like that way they 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 portray ghosts in both the movies right Mm -hmm. i feel like they really did copy and paste a lot of the movie like we get another ghostbuster catching montage of them in the ecto 2 the ecto 2 there's a new song with a different little twist right they get new black suits yeah i like the black suits there was a handful of things that were cutting out like when the pink ooze is coming out of the tub there was supposed to be a giant pink frog that she was supposed to like hurt by throwing something at it and accidentally like killing it and then she was going to go to a hotel instead of vankman's but that whole part was cut out also in the subway after the train goes by right Mm -hmm. the the train goes through winston there's supposed to be another like creature to pop out there that was also cut out i mean those things would be cool you know yeah they could have been a cool addition i do feel like not a whole lot of things happens in the movie and that would have definitely helped help a little bit yeah for sure when they're developing the pictures yeah the moment where they're picking up what to eat feels like really real and genuine but that's like one of the only moments that happens (laughs) yeah because i think the effect of the the pictures bursting into flames was a cool effect too that looked cool well there was a whole other subplot also with vigo cut out so remember when ray is looking into the eyes of vigo the first time and he kind of gets in trance. Mm-hmm. Well, that was supposed to lead into him getting a little bit possessed from Vigo after that, where they get into the car and he's supposed to be driving all crazy in the Ecto one. And then they crash and he snaps out of it, which also leads to the whole pictures bursting into flames thing. Mm. It would have been better if we lost Janos and had Ackroyd be the one that's possessed than Sigourney being like the curator or whatever. I think that would have been better and make the the movie a little bit more tighter because you you introduce Janos. I love the character, but as as his own thing, the actor did a good job on his thing. But it's I think that is too much for this movie. He does get in the way, and I do agree. Now that you say that, if if they would have made Ray that that kind of like the, the bad guy, guy possessed yeah. by Vigo Vigo. Sigourney would have trusted him and that would have mm-hmm. been a way to get in, right? Yeah, and you're using what you have. At the end, he just possesses him out of nowhere, so that doesn't make sense either because there wasn't any subplot prior letting us know, except for him just in the trance for a split second, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's no basis for that happening in the rest of the movie. Why did he completely take him over and not take Janusz over? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, he's experienced. Why was he so easily susceptible to take over? There was a lot of bits and pieces there that were kind of flying in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we're jumping through hoops and trying to piece it together because, yeah, it makes sense. It would have made sense that Aykroyd would be possessed because being that he's so involved in the process and, like, he's studying the the goo, he's in contact with the goo, he's with the pictures, and he's this and he's that. You can blame it on the goo. Exactly. Yeah. So you could have done that. Instead, you did what we have. So it it makes a lot of shit don't make sense. 
Bill Murray putting down the baby was funny to me. You're short. Your belly button sticks out too far. And you're a terrible burden on your poor mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's harsh. Yeah, it's, it's just him and the baby, man. You could have given me an hour and a half of Bill Murray just babysitting, and I would have watched it probably, <laughs> preferably over the end product of this movie. Even when he's like putting his sweater as a diaper, it was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> what is also great is Sigourney in a towel. I wait. Ay, cabron. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Enough said. Moving along. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Janine Melnitz is fine as hell, too. Annie Potts, the secretary, she's cute as hell, too. In the first one, she was kind of like whatever. In this yeah. one, she got a little bit more spunk. Well, they changed her look to look similar to the real Ghostbusters character. Yeah, it, it, it felt like that. Because even the, the character changes. But in this one, she's like more chipper. She's more involved. She's whatever. And I was like, the aesthetic change, that's more different. And my boy Rick Moranis gets the brush wig. I know. He's making out with Sigourney in the first one and he's making out with Andy Potts in the second one. Cabron. <laughs> Winston falls into the ooze and the other two just jump in. Are you jumping in the ooze after me, douche? I don't feel like you would. No. You're not. <laughs> you bastard. <Yeah. laughs> I feel like Felix will because he is not. He wouldn't jump in to save me. He would be like, I want to know what that feels like. <laughs> That's what he would do. Yo, I've been living with ghosts all my life. So, hey, bring it on. What's another stripe of the tiger? Another copy paste is that they get committed, so they get pulled away from what they have to fix, right? The 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 secretary for the for the for for the mayor. Uh huh. Ese puto. That guy is always a bad guy, and he's so good at it. I hate him. I hate him so mm. much. He has a hateful face. <laughs> yeah, so punchable. But the doctor that actually commits him is actually played by Bill Murray's brother. Oh yeah. Other cameos are Bobby Brown as the door at the doorman. <laughs> and a Cheech Marin oh, see my- <laughs> as he's looking at the Titanic rolling in <laughs> at the docks there was a bunch of other scenes that were cut from the psych ward as well and even at, when they show up to save the day it's the same thing they show up everybody's cheering he, he comes out it felt very copy paste right mm-hmm. they do try to do something crazy and that is that they start to control the Statue of Liberty with an NES advantage with that, which I obviously thought was cool oh yeah that was cool yeah that part but originally they were supposed to fight the statue of liberty vigo was supposed to possess her yeah that would be cool that would that would have been cool that but then how cool. do you fight her with what do you fight her with with the ectoplasm with the stay puff man he's dead you have to but you have to figure out a way you to cross bring him streams back. you cross streams and you bring them back yeah something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> do you guys consider it a new year's movie no no i would have to if i consider die hard a christmas movie no it didn't come out in New Year's. Neither did Die Hard. By all intents and purposes, or by all means, it should be a New Year's movie. But since it didn't have the impact that Die Hard did, I think that's yeah. why people don't think of it as a New Year's movie. But it is. Because there's no propaganda. There's going to be New Year's. Uh-huh. Nothing like that in, in the whole movie until the end. If there would have been a, a Christmas scene or whatever, I think it would have helped. But it was, there was nothing. So is it a bad movie? Mm. Or is it a bad movie with a good property that pulls them over the kind of good movie finish line? I think that is what happens. Because labeling it a bad movie to me is a little bit too harsh. Yeah. But it's just not better than the first. And the first is an all-time movie, so it's hard. But the drop-off is too big, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I think it's because of nostalgia we can't say it's a bad movie. It does carry a lot. It does ride on the success of the first one. It's a mid movie, even a little bit above mid. Yeah, I do like it. It's a bad sequel. I mean, yeah, it's a bad sequel. It's a bad sequel, man. I mean, you, you're not gonna if you're gonna watch the Ghostbusters again, you're gonna probably watch the first one always. You pro- people probably watch both. Mm. But to be fair to Ackroyd, Ackroyd originally wanted the movie to take place in Scotland, where Weaver's character would have been kidnapped by an evil force. So that already is changing a lot of the movie. We would have been taken out of New York City. This movie also is heavily toned down, as I mentioned from the first, because it borrows more from the cartoon series that aired between both movies. Especially the Ray character is super similar to the cartoon. And the Slimer character is now a good guy compared to a technically bad guy from the first movie. I didn't like Slimer in this movie. The first movie, they smoke a lot. In the mm-hmm. second one, 
Oh, Simon. They don't smoke a lot. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll they're, also take that out. It was something normal. Every, everyone smoke everywhere. Yeah, and in this one, I think the only time you see them smoking is when they're going up the inside of the stat. <laughs> They're spunking up the inside of the Statue of Liberty, and 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 Ray has a cigar. <laughs> yeah, Ray always has a cigar. Yeah. So as I mentioned already, Bill Murray really didn't like making the movie, and he hates the second movie. He didn't even want to make it, as I mentioned. That's why it took five years to make it, and it actually became a ripple between him and Ray's mis- professional relationship. Mm. Oh, that's so sad. And even after this movie, it was very famously known that he was very against making a third one all throughout the 90s, and the 2000s, Akron was trying to make Ghostbusters 3, and it wasn't being made strictly because of Murray. He w- re- kept refusing. He said he was down to making a third movie only if Vanquin was killed off. <laughs> and of course, they're not going to do that. No. No. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's an iconic. You got possessed by Beagle. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the, the Ghostbusters are too ingrained in in pop culture now. It's a very special franchise, right? Even yeah. though it has two movies, we don't even count the third movie. Was the third one is Afterlife? No, that is correct. There's nothing in between. No, it definitely doesn't feel as ponderous as the first movie. But well, speaking of the first movie, we already reviewed that, and we'll leave that for you right over here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to always and forever, you do you. Bye. Boosh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>